Hi guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about the thorn in the flesh and how God uses a thorn in Christians to discipline them. This is in Hebrews chapter 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. I've, I've read these before, these verses. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? For if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness." Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. What does that mean? If you're God's child, he will chastise you and discipline you. And it says he does it for his for your profit that we may be partakers of his holiness and that the discipline doesn't seem to be joyous it's grievous but afterwards it yields the it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness that's what the refinement process Pretty much. God's discipline. Within that is the refinement process. He'll discipline you too if you sin, but this is also in general, like I talked about in my other video, about why we exist. You know how I, I just made that video about the testings of God's chosen people? How if you're chosen, you will be tested? Now, what I mean by that is you'll go through temptations, as in the devil will try to get you to sin, right? Temptations, persecutions. People will persecute you, treat you badly. The demonic thoughts where the, the demons persecute you also. And then also tribulations, hard times. But within those hard times, there may be a thorn. Now, God placed a thorn on Paul. This is in 2 Corinthians. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities 
that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So God put a thorn upon Paul, a messenger of Satan. It's called the messenger of Satan to buffet him. What does buffet mean? It means kick him around. Like hit him. Because he says, lest I should be exalted above measure. As in God had shown Paul so many great things, blessed him so much, talked to him on such a high level. I mean, the man wrote many books of the New Testament. The Holy Spirit wrote it through him. Very anointed by God. And God's like, so you don't get proud. I'm going to put this thorn on you. Because I anointed you so highly. You're getting this thorn. Because I'm not going to let you get proud. And then Paul was like, asked God to take it away three times. And God was like, no. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And then Paul's like, okay, then I'll glory in, in all the persecutions and infirmities and reproaches and everything. For Christ's sake. Now God may have taken away that thorn at a different time. But at that time he wanted the thorn on him. You know when I talk about my trials? Now don't get me wrong, we're all going to have to go through persecutions, temptations, tribulations. But the trials that I talk about, too, the big ones, what I'm talking about is the thorn that God places on me. God has placed on me a thorn at least three, no, it's not at least, it's three times during the six years of my walk with him. A thorn. When I say a thorn, I don't even want to say exactly what it is. It's a physical ailment. And within that physical ailment, it's like anxiety and fear and suffering and torture. Do you guys know what time it is? It's like... 4 11 a.m. Do you guys think that if God never put that thorn on me, that I would be up at 4 a.m. making a video for him? Why do you guys think I'm so anointed? And I don't say that with pride. It's just that children of God know that he speaks through my mouth. Now I have, I have flaws. I'm not perfect, but you'll know he speaks through my mouth. If you're one of God's children. Why do you think I'm so anointed? It's because I went through hell. Now in the beginning of my walk, he gave me the thorn, then he took it away. Years later, he put the thorn back on me. Then he took it away, and then, well, this last time, he put the thorn on me again. 
Now my thorn is specific for me. It's something that makes me suffer a lot, specifically. He knows what makes me suffer a lot and what's going to discipline me and motivate me. Your thorn may be different. Now, the first time he put the thorn on me, it motivated me to repent. The second time, he did it to refine me. And the third time, this time, he did it to refine me even more. To put me where I am now. If God never put these thorns on me, this is part of the testings that I talk about. If he never put the, th the thorn on me, you know where I'd be? I'd be chilling. That's where I'd be. I'd be like, I'm, I'm saved by grace through faith. I'm chilling. I'd still serve him, of course, because I love him and live in repentance, but I wouldn't be serving him on this level. When he put the thorn on me, the second and third times, it was not punishment, it was to refine me. Because I wasn't living in sin unto death, all right? Now, with the prodigal son, He went off and did evil, lived in sin, and then he was disciplined by God. God may put a thorn on you because you lived in sin and he'll discipline you to get you out of sin. But he'll also put a thorn on you if he just wants to refine you. Doesn't mean that you did evil. See, I wasn't living in sin. I, sure, I wasn't perfect. I wasn't even falling to really horrible sins unto death. I was living in repentance. I wasn't perfect, but... God was like, I'm going to refine her again. Bring her through the fire. As you know how I say that the valley of the shadow of death for me is, is the deep waters. That's the thorn I'm talking about. When the thorn is placed upon me, it's hell on earth for me. It feels like I'm in the, the fire, but it's also, I guess, I would think about it as in deep waters and you're just in deep waters and you're like trying to float and you're trying to swim and you're like going down like this. God showed me it's like deep waters, but I also believe it's like fire because it's, he's refining me through fire. If you're God's child, he may place a thorn on you to discipline you. It may be because you lived in sin, but also if you're his child and you weren't living in sin, even if you fell or whatever, if you were living in repentance, it's to discipline you and to refine you. Your thorn may be different than my thorn. But do you see he does it For your good, for your profit, it says. For your profit, and so that we might be partakers of his holiness. What does that mean? It purifies you. It 
purifies you. Have you guys ever seen the Bible series? The Bible series. Very edifying. I recommend watching that. It's kind of violent, but the Old Testament's pretty violent, isn't it? There's a scene in the Bible series. I'm going to put it in the description where Jesus Christ is being tempted by the devil. And the devil says to him, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. And there's a scene where it's like if Jesus had done that, I mean, he didn't do that, but it's just the scene is of him being a king. I mean, he is a real king, but it's like if he had given in to the devil, what would have happened? And he was sitting there and someone was like, you know, putting water on his foot or like, you know, worshiping him like, and then it cuts to a scene of him with the thorns on his head being put on his head. And he's like, oh, oh, when they're putting the thorns on his head. It's a representation of if he had obeyed Satan, he would have gotten the kingdoms of the world and glorified and whatever. I mean, he is a king, he's God, and he wouldn't have given in to Satan, but do you understand what I'm saying? Compared to what he would have to go through, what he knew he would have to go through when they put the thorns on him. And then he said to him, after that scene, get behind me, Satan. You know, I'll only worship God. But man, after my trial, I watched that video. I believe God led me to that video. And when I saw that scene where he was like, oh, oh, with the thorns, I was like, that, that's me. Now, I'm not saying I'm him. And I'm not saying I had thorns put on my head. His suffering was way worse than mine. But it does say, like, he is, so are we in this world, and that we will partake in his sufferings. In 1 Peter, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. We partake in his sufferings. <clears throat> In Philippians, it says, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. <clears throat> Do you see the fellowship of his sufferings, partaking in his sufferings? And it also says in, in Hebrews that looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. When I look at that part where he's suffering, and I don't like to see him suffering. But when I looked at it, and I saw it, and I watched it, I don't know how many times I watched it, definitely more than once. It edified me. Because I felt like I was suffering with him. 
I partake in his sufferings. It's not completely the same, of course. But he was tempted, I'm tempted. He went through hard tribulation, I go through hard tribulation. It's worse, his is worse, okay? He was persecuted, I'm persecuted. People treated him like trash, people treat me like trash. The demons tried to persecute him in his mind, I'm sure. The demons persecute me in my mind. He went through physical suffering. I went through physical suffering when God put those thorns on me. And when he is doing that, when he's like, ah, ah, like that, that's how I felt in my trials and with the thorn. It was worse, but that's how I felt. It was like that. The fear, the anxiety, the everything in the trial and with the thorn. <sighs> when I think about that thorn... The discipline. I'm like, Paige, you better do his will and do what he wants you to do on, on here. Because you don't want that thorn back, right? Now, when I came back to him, I, I still had the thorn, but it wasn't as bad. But what he showed me is a very edifying video by Paul Washer. It's called God's Man about how we are to glorify him and it's not about us getting what we want but it's about his glory I had watched it in the past but God really spoke to me through it and he taught me I'm made for his glory and when he puts the thorn on me even then it's to glorify him because it's testings it's trials that glorify him also so when I came back and I was serving him, I still had parts of the thorn on me. And don't get me wrong, I still go through testings and trials and in the way of like temptations and persecutions from demons and sometimes from people or whatever. And tribulation. But it's not on the level of the thorns, okay? But when he had put the thorn on me, it's like disciplined me greatly. I would never do this on this level. I mean, that's it. So when I think of the thorn, disciplines me to do his will of what he wants for me to do. That's why when I tell people, I'm like, if you're jealous of me, you have no idea what I've been through. The thorns he placed upon me. And it's because I have a high calling I have a high calling in Christ. You know what he showed me? He specifically showed me he did it because he loves me. 
and he was with me the whole time. You show me that very strongly. Very strongly. He speaks to me on a high level. Do you think these things, my anointing, him speaking to me at a high level, it doesn't just come like without the refinement. He needed to purify me to put me where I am. He scourges every one of his children. You know what a scourge is? It's like a whip. He whips you into shape. So when I think of that thorn, it brings fear into me and I'm like, I better do what God wants. But back to the glory thing with Paul Washer video. When I was still coming back to him and I started serving him and I still had the thorn on me, I had to look at it as this is glorifying God to keep the thorn on me and I must still continue on in my mission. I hope I never have to go through that thorn again. But if I did, I'd know that I'd have to have the right mindset of this thorn glorifies God and he's doing it for a reason. Because when I came back and I started doing his will and what he wanted, he didn't take the thorn away right away. He kept it on me in certain ways. So if you're God's child and you have a thorn on you, God allowed it to be there. You know the whole thing of like, by his stripes we are healed? I do believe that. But also, when Paul was asking God to take the thorn away, he said no. It wasn't like Paul was like, okay, well, by your stripes, I'm healed. So, I'm healed now, right, God? He's like, no, I put the thorn on you. God's in control of this stuff with his children. He's taught me many things through those thorns. It edifies me. To look at that video and to see Jesus suffering, not that I'm happy about his suffering or that I want to see him suffering, but that I think that's me partaking in his sufferings too. I'm with him in it, is what I'm saying. It's not literally me, but because that's how I felt. Do you see those verses about how he endured the cross despising the shame. You know how much shame I had to go through throughout my trials with the thorns? It was so embarrassing. I looked like a crazy person because I was suffering so bad. It was hell on earth, man. The thorn, the, the discipline, I was like, I wish I had never been created. I wish I had never been born. That you would put this on me, God. But do you see, he did it for good. He put me in a, a high position and I will be greatly rewarded in heaven. I'd never serve him on this level without that thorn. 
So if you have a thorn, he may keep it on you. I'm going to make a part two.